Hey guys, today is a very special day. Today, of course, is Sunday, April 1st, Easter Sunday. For many, many millions of people around the world today, it's a, a very special holiday. So I want to wish everybody that's celebrating a happy Easter, sincerely. Um, so I wanted to do something special for the holiday. I wanted to take a look at a operating system that I really don't know anything about and that I normally would never take a look at. That operating system is Windows. I have not used Windows in a very long time. The last time I had a machine that had Windows pre-installed on it and that I lived in Windows was way back in the XP days. I never used Vista. Never used 7. I never used 8. I never used 10. But people have told me that Windows has gotten better over the years, you know, since the days when I was using it way back in the XP days, you know, a lot of the problems, sometimes I talk about the old Windows, you know, with viruses and malware and privacy issues and, you know, things like that. When people tell me, you know, Windows has gotten better. Windows gets better with each release or whatever. Maybe it has. Uh, I, I need to give it a shot. I need to give it a fair chance. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a first impression, install and review of Windows 10, so let's check it out. Okay, so I'm going to install Windows 10 here inside a virtual machine today. This will be VirtualBox. It's been many, many years since I've done an install of Windows. I remember Windows X XP was not the easiest thing in the world or the uh, quickest thing in the world to install. All right, the setup wizard here, the Windows setup, it says language, English US, that's correct. Time and currency format, English US, that's correct. Keyboard, US keyboard has been selected, that's correct. So I'm just gonna click next, then click install now. Seems pretty straightforward. Okay. Setup is starting. We got the little hourglass. Been a long time since I saw an hourglass on the desktop like that. But I remember the little hourglass where you would sit there sometimes and wait. Sometimes seconds. Sometimes minutes for things to load. I've missed that. Anyway, it's asking for our product key. Product key. I don't have a product key. I don't think I need one just to try it out. We can always activate our copy of Windows later. So I can choose I don't have a product key. Get that hourglass again. I think we're going to see this hourglass a lot today. Uh, I'm not sure what version of Windows 10 I want to do. Do I want to do Windows 10 S? I'm not sure what that is. Windows 10 S N. Windows 10 Home. Windows 10 Home N. Really not sure what S and S N mean. But it's selected uh, Windows 10 S by default. Let me just go with that. All right, the Microsoft Software License. Windows Operating System, yeah, I like that. If you live in or the United States, please read the binding arbit arbitration clause and class, class action lawsuit waiver. Hmm. Okay, so by accepting this agreement and using the software, I agree to the following terms. And some of these terms seem pretty reasonable. Uh, basically, it's telling me that, uh, you know, the Adobe Flash Player is licensed by Adobe, not Microsoft. And that's good to know. Uh, it's also telling me that, you know, the uh, license here, that the software, Windows in this case, is licensed to us. It is not sold to us. Under this agreement, we grant you the right to install and run one instance of the software on your device, the licensed device, for use by one person at a time, so long as you comply with all the terms of this agreement. So basically, I'm renting this, I'm not buying it. Oh, and I have some restrictions here. Now, these are things you really don't get with like free licenses like the GPL and uh, the BSD license, the Apache license, the MIT license. They don't really restrict your freedoms in such a way. Uh, this is actually pretty cool. Uh, I'm not allowed to virtualize features of the software separately. I'm not allowed to publish, copy, rent, lease, or lend the software to anyone. Uh, I am permitted to make a backup copy. Thanks, Microsoft. I'm not allowed to transfer the software. 
I'm not allowed to work around any technical restrictions or limitations in the software. So if I have a problem with the software, it's restricting me or limiting me in such a way that, you know, I might want to hack on it to fix it. I'm not allowed to do that. Uh, I'm not allowed to use the software as server software for commercial hosting, making the software available for si simultaneous use by multiple users over a network. Well, I don't, I'm not installing a server edition today. I'm not allowed to reverse engineer, decompile, or disassemble the software, or to attempt to do so. All right, authorized software and activation. Uh, when you connect to the internet while using the software, the software will, will automatically contact Microsoft or an affiliate to conduct activation to associate it with a certain device. So my machine is constantly in contact with Microsoft. Cool. Updates. The software periodically checks for system and app updates and downloads and installs them for you. So instead of me having to manually check for updates and decide when to install my updates, uh, Microsoft takes care of all that for us. It decides when to do an update and it does it whether I want to or not. Not bad. And of course, there's a clause in here about binding arbitration and class action waivers if you live in the United States. Uh, we hope we never have a dispute, but if we do, you and we agree to try for 60 days to resolve it informally. Meaning, if I have a problem with Microsoft, uh, I have to at least spend 60 days with them in arbitration to try to solve that problem before I sue them in court. Reasonable. But enough of the licensing. I accept the license terms. I'm okay with these. Not really. But anyway, which type of installation do you want? Do you want to upgrade or do you want to custom install Windows only? And it says that is advanced. Uh, I assume I need to do the custom one since I'm not upgrading anything. Yeah, the upgrade is only available if you already have Windows installed. This is a fresh install inside a VM, so I need to do custom. It says it's for advanced users though. Let's see how this goes. Where do you want to install Windows? Drive zero, unallocated space, 50 gigs. Yeah, I created a 50 gig virtual hard drive here in this virtual machine. So that's where I'm going to install Windows 10. All right, installing. Getting files ready for installation. Now your typical Linux install these days, especially some of the more user-friendly ones, uh, like Ubuntu. Ubuntu really started the trend of these really fast, really easy Linux installs. Uh, start to finish, 15 minutes. So, Windows 10, you're on the clock. Alright, it's going through this list pretty fast. Uh, it went through getting files ready for installation, updating the system. Oh, Windows needs to restart. Awesome. I wonder if I need to uh, detach the ISO if, for, or if it's going to do this automatically. Yep, I need to uh, detach the ISO and then restart the VM. Okay, so we re rebooted the VM. Had to remove the ISO from the VM. It's the same as removing the DVD from the drive or the USB stick from the computer. Uh, the computer restarted unexpected, unexpectedly or encountered an unexpected error. To install Windows, click OK to restart the computer, then restart installation. Hmm. Something messed up there. Maybe I needed to leave the ISO attached. Maybe it was too soon to uh, detach that thing. Yeah, let me reattach the ISO and start the VM again. Okay, so I reattach the ISO. Hopefully this doesn't start us back with the install process from the beginning. No, the computer restarted or unexpect or encountered an unexpected error. Okay, why is this giving me problems? It's stuck in this weird loop. I may have to start from the beginning. Yeah, it's going back to the to the install. So I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to go through all this again off camera. 
So I went through the install process again. Uh, Windows needs to restart to continue. This time I'm, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to leave the ISO attached. Uh, press any key to boot from CD. Okay, I didn't press anything. And we wait. Okay. Yeah, so me detaching the ISO messed that up. So that's not Windows problem. That's on me. All right, it's asking us to choose an operating system. We have the choice of Windows 10 on Volume 2 or Windows 10 on Volume 2. Uh, I'm going to choose Windows 10 on Volume 2. And we wait for this to load. I had to go grab me a second cup of coffee. I'm not sure how long this install process is going to take. I said start to finish, you know, on most Linux distributions, uh, the, especially the user-friendly ones these days, 15 minutes. It's been about 15 minutes already. So I'm assuming the uh, the Windows install is, is pretty close to being done. It's still getting ready, though. One thing that I love when I'm sitting here waiting for minutes at a time and you just have like these spinning animated things and it says getting ready. You know, in Linux, they give you too much information. They usually give you some kind of terminal output. You see a bunch of stuff, you know, processes going on in the background. You have some idea what your computer is doing. Windows, they don't want to uh, bombard you with all that information. They just have this uh, spinning animated thing going around and it says getting ready. So kind of leaves you guessing about what's going on with your computer. Okay. All right. So uh, I've had this little spinning animated thing spinning around on the screen, getting ready. It's been getting ready for, I don't know, four or five minutes now. Again, it's not giving me any kind of terminal output or anything to look at. Oh, perfect timing. Okay. Looks like it rebooted again, so it's rebooting itself, so I'm not having to do anything here. And then we get our little animated spinny thing. Is it going to tell me it's getting ready again? No, I don't even get the getting ready thing anymore. Ah, just a moment. Okay. It's going to work out, guys. All right. Hi there. I'm Cortana, and Hi. I'm here to help. Hi there. I'm Cortana. Come in here, put your Wi-Fi there, and we'll have your PC ready for all you plan to do. You can use your voice or the keyboard along the way, and if you'd like okay. to stay quiet, you can just mute your PC. If you need an assistive screen reader, press the Windows, Control, and Enter keys at the same time to enable narrator. Okay, guys. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys can hear the desktop audio. I'm not sure if I actually set it to record this. I actually didn't expect the Windows installation to talk to me. But Cortana's talking to me, and uh, she's asking me, is the United States correct for me? That is. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and choose yes here for the region. The United States was correct. Your keyboard is set to U.S. Want to stick with that? Oh, my goodness. I'm not going to like Cortana. Please shut up. Disable voice control. All right. Want to add a second keyboard layout? Uh, no. I'm fine with just a standard U.S. keyboard layout. Of course, you know, some folks like to do things like uh, use Dvorak and, and, you know, those weird keyboard layouts. I just use a, a QWERTY keyboard. All right, we're back to uh, the spinning thing here. All right, how would you like to set up? Set up for personal use? Set up for an organization? I guess I need to do personal use. All right, just a moment. All right, do we want to sign in with Microsoft with an email, phone, or Skype? Uh, I'm going to have to do that not on camera. Actually, will it let me skip that? Let me just click next. No, I have to give it a valid email, phone, or Skype name. That's unfortunate. 
All right, so now it's asking us to sign in with Microsoft instead because I didn't want to give it up. They wanted a email. They wanted the password to my email, not just a password like I create now. They wanted like a real email and a password, probably one of the Microsoft services uh, email like Outlook or Hotmail or something. Even if I had one of those, uh, I'm not giving Microsoft the password, even though they have it. Um uh, so sign in with Microsoft instead. Do I have any of these services? Outlook, Office, Skype, OneDrive, Xbox, Bing, Store, Windows, MSN. Uh, I'm not sure if I have any of these. I'm going to skip all of that. Who's going to use this PC? DT. Uh, what name do you want to use? Yeah, DT. Uh, create a super memorable password. Okay, let me give it a super memorable password. Confirm that super memorable password. I think I can remember that. Add a hint for your password in case you forget. There we go. <laughs> your password hint can't contain your password. Okay. How about in reverse? <laughs> Come on, Microsoft. Let me do just what I want to do. All right. Make Cortana your personal assistant. To let Cortana provide personal, personalized experiences and relevant suggestions, do, do we want to let this chick speak to us? Yeah, why not? Kind of a sexy voice. I don't mind listening to it. All right, choose privacy settings for your device. All right, do we want to allow Microsoft to uh, know our location? You know, certain windows and apps request the location. Uh, yeah, I'm going to leave that on. I want them to know exactly where I'm at. Diagnos diagnostics helps us fix things and improve Microsoft products and services. Do I want to send them information about my computer? You know, what browser I'm using, what settings I use. Yeah, anything they want to know about my software, my hardware, my personal life, they can have it. Relevant ads. Do I want Microsoft to send me relevant ads? Yeah, give me all the ads you got. All right, speak recognition. Talk to Cortana. Yep, I've got that turned on. Tailored experiences with diagnostic data. Yeah. So get more relevant tips and recommendations to tailor Microsoft products and services for your needs. Yeah, I want them to serve me better ads. So why doesn't Linux distributions do stuff like this? I, I, I mean, this is great. They're basically saying they're going to know everything about my software, the software I run. They may even be scanning my personal files. Who knows? It's hard to say because the Microsoft license said that I pretty much don't own the software anyway. So uh, they're going to know more about me than I probably know about myself. So I expect this to be an awesome desktop experience. All right, this might take several minutes. Don't turn off your PC. Okay, guys, well, I'm going to pause the video for a few minutes. Well, while this runs, I'll finish my coffee. All right, I got a new screen. It says, let's start. Okay, the install process, by the way, so far has taken about 30 minutes. So already about twice as long as, you know, what something like Ubuntu or Mint or SUSE or Fedora, you know, some of the more easier, quick installs in Linux. So a little disappointed in Microsoft in that, but at the same time, Many of us actually enjoy installing operating systems, so it's doubled the fun, at least so far. All right, welcome to the best Windows ever. I've been hearing that. So uh, set up your browser, sync your browsing favorites, and I'll, uh, I'm not going to import anything into the, the browser. Save space with files on demand. I'm not going to do that. See what else is new. I don't want to do any of that. Uh, yeah, so let me just close this browser. And, uh, okay, so that took, I don't know, from start to finish, I, I timed it. It was about 28 minutes because I started right at noon and it's 12.28 now. Not a bad install process. Of course, I got the, hi, I'm Cortana thing coming up. Me and Cortana, we're going to have some fun. But first things first, I need to see if I can get the VirtualBox Guest Editions working in Windows. I've never installed VirtualBox Guest Editions in Windows, so... Should be interesting. 
Downloading the guest editions. All right, it's asking to insert the guest editions. All right, select. All right, how do we want to do this? We want to run the executable, the Windows executable. For security and performance, this mode of Windows only runs verified apps from the store. This helps protect your PC and keep it running smoothly. So it won't just let me run any Windows executable. Okay. All right, so I open up a file manager. I go to this PC. I see the VirtualBox guest editions here. So go into it. I'm assuming the file I need to run is Wind VBox Windows Editions AMD 64. It's a 64-bit operating system. Run as administrator. All right. Show more details. Uh, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? Yeah. I wouldn't have tried to run it. Had I not wanted it to, for security and performance, this mode of Windows only runs verified apps from the store. This helps protect you. So apparently it is not going to let me install the VirtualBox guest editions, no matter what. It says, still want to run this unverified app? Yes, I do. See how. Let me click on see how. How do I do that? Oh, I switched to Windows 10 Pro. I pay $199.99 and then it will allow me to install whatever software I want. Okay. Um, I'm not going to do that today though. So apparently uh, Microsoft Windows takes security to the next level, uh, trying to be a much more secure system than say Linux for example, Windows will not just let you uh, download and install anything on your computer. They protect you from yourself. So um, good job on that Microsoft. So let me just go ahead and review Windows 10 here. Uh, I guess with this very small screen resolution since the VirtualBox guest editions are a little too dangerous for someone like me to run. All right, so normally on my Linux distro re reviews, what I do is I end up going through the menu system, showing you various programs that are installed by default. I'm going to do the same thing here in Windows. Why not? So I'm going to go down here and click on the Windows logo. Should launch our menu. And this is interesting. Uh, we've got a bunch of spinning animated web tile thingies. Um, yeah, not exactly sure what I'm supposed to do in this menu. Uh, we have a menu here. It's not really categories. This is more like a uh, contact list. I mean, it almost everything is alphabetized rather than categorized. Uh, I'm just going to go through the alphabetical list here. Of course, we've got alarms and clocks. I'm not going to take a look at that. Uh, Windows comes with a calculator. Let's launch the calculator. That's a very nice calculator. All right, back to the menu. We have our calendar. We have a camera application. We have connect. I'm assuming that's to connect to all our social media stuff that we didn't bother going through in the install. Uh, I'm still not going to bother with that. Cortana. Let me click Cortana. To help you on time, remember what's important and much more. I need some info. So we need to sign in, I guess, to give Cortana the information she needs. I can't do that, Cortana. We have a Feedback Hub, Get Help, Get Office. So Microsoft Office, of course, is not installed, uh, but you can purchase Microsoft Office if you want to. Uh, I'm not sure what Microsoft Office costs these days. Let me check it out. So we can install Office 365. If I click on Get Office 365, let's see, take us to the Microsoft Store. And it gives us a description. Uh, how much does the Office 365 cost, though? Um, is it not going to give me any kind of pricing information? If it does, it looks like they try to hide it well. Uh, let's see. It is subscription-based, because somebody mentions it in the comments here. Oh, well. I'm not going to buy Microsoft Office 365, but for those of you that need it for work or for school, it's there. All right, we have Groove Music. I'm not sure what this is. I'm assuming it's an audio player of some kind. 
setting things up. Wow. Really cool little uh, video that plays at the beginning. All right, there's no music found on the system because I, of course, haven't added anything. But it looks like it's a pretty sharp audio player. Uh, add some music. Here's how. We'll add songs from any files you have on this PC. Or we can add music to your OneDrive. I'm not a OneDrive user. Mail. Uh, I'm not sure what mail client they're using. Are they using a... Let's see. Add account. Well, I'm not going to do that. But the mail client, it just says mail. I guess that's the name of it. Maps. Again, it's just called Maps, no other name. That's kind of confusing for Windows to have a Maps program that they simply call Maps. And GNOME has a Maps program that they call Maps, too. Uh, it gets very confusing when you just label things, such generic labels like Mail, Maps, you know, Files. Uh, the next one, another very descriptive name, Messaging. Let's see. What is this for? SMS text. Okay. Uh, it can show messages you've sent and received from apps such as Skype. Skype, of course, is a Microsoft product. Not a Skype user. Let's see what else we have. Microsoft Edge. Now, this is their web browser. This is the first time I've ever actually launched Microsoft Edge. I was a... Uh, used to Internet Explorer was the browser for many, many years in Microsoft Windows. Now, recently, they switched to something called Microsoft Edge. I don't know too much about it. Uh, looks like a pretty sharp web browser, though. We can import our favorites, so I'm assuming you can import all your bookmarks from Internet Explorer, for those that are used to that. Probably would import your bookmarks from Firefox as well. Chrome. Of course, Chrome is... Google Chrome, unfortunately, is probably the most popular web browser in the world, but it's proprietary garbage. Um, of course, Microsoft Edge is proprietary garbage, too. Guys, use free and open source web browsers. Firefox, Chromium. All right, we have the Microsoft Solitaire Collection. Now, I will give Windows credit here. Their uh, solitaire games have always been some of the funnest games you will ever find on any operating system. Uh, unfortunately, when I just launched it, it crashed here. It did not even load. Um, and I was about to say something positive about Windows and Microsoft software, and the program I launched crashed. We have a mixed reality portal. I'm not sure what that is. Movies and TV, I'm assuming, is our video player. Yeah. Oh, you, you can purchase the latest Star Wars movie for $4.99. That's pretty cool. Um, I would probably just install VLC if I was running Windows, though. VLC is such a nice video player. Uh, we have uh, OneDrive, OneNote. Uh, we have Paint 3D, a paint program. People. What is people? I'm assuming this is like a contact. Uh, yeah, where you add all your contacts. That way, Microsoft not only knows everything about you, you can also... Uh, share that information about people you know, too. That way they know a little bit about your friends and your family. Very important. Photos. This is our photo manager for collecting uh, your photos, for those of you that do a lot of, uh, especially if you use cameras. And, of course, we have Skype. I'm not going to launch Skype. Sticky Notes. The Store. The Microsoft Store. Let's see what the top apps in the Microsoft Store are. Charts, best selling, top free, because that's what I would want. The top free apps are Spotify, Netflix, Instagram, Messenger, Facebook, WhatsApp, Hulu, Adobe, Pandora, Amazon. Yeah, Cody is on here. VLC, of course. Mentioned VLC. They actually have a lot of, a lot of stuff in the store. There isn't a lack of a uh, of apps. That's for sure. Seems to have a lot of stuff available. Now, they won't have everything available. There'll be a lot of Linux-only apps that I'm used to that, of course, won't be in the Microsoft Store. That would be a problem for me to switch to Windows is, you know, it won't have the software that I want to run. And uh, that's a pain. Now, let me go back to the top apps list and the best-selling. How about the top paid apps? 
see what some of the uh, like proprietary software, some of the big ones are, because um, I don't know really anything about proprietary and paid software for the most part. But some of the big ones, of course, Adobe Photoshop, you know, paint.net is in here, uh, Live Home 3D Pro, of course, your office suites. And we have uh, some zip programs. People actually pay for zip and un unzip programs. PDF Manager. I mean, it's a 99 cent program, but why would you pay for a PDF manager? Uh, you know, people that are used to Microsoft Windows and proprietary software, they make some strange choices sometimes. Uh, Movie Maker Pro. I mean, it's a $5 app, but uh, I don't know. There's so many good free and open source solutions. And I have been told that there are two or three Linux distributions that you can get in the Microsoft Store. Uh, of course, you run them on the Windows subsystem for Linux. So uh, search for Ubuntu returns. Uh, yeah, install and run Linux distributions side by side on your Windows machine. And yep, Ubuntu is here and it is free. So that's great. And back to the menu system here. Uh, we have tips. We have view 3D. Not sure what View 3D is. Some interesting default programs here. It looks like it's another uh, graphics program. Uh, back to the list, we have, of course, the weather app again. We have Window ex Windows Accessories, and that's your character map. Internet Explorer is also here. Of course, it's kind of hidden under this Windows Accessories list. They want you to use, I guess, Microsoft Edge now. You have a Snipping Tool, Steps Recorder, Windows Fax and Scan. The Windows Media Player is here. I haven't looked at Windows Media Player in forever. Does it still look the same? Yeah, it, it does. It looks pretty much the same as it always has. I will give Windows Media Player credit, though. It does work. It's not a bad media player. Uh, we have Windows Administrative Tools, uh, Recovery. Uh, you know what? Resource Monitor. Let's see. What kind of CPU and memory usage we're, uh, we're using here. All right, CPU usage. I gave this two cores of my six core CPU, and it's using about 7% of it, 8%, 10%, 9%, yeah, somewhere between 7 and 10% of the CPU. We're not doing really anything on this computer right now, so that's, that's a little high. That's higher than pretty much any Linux dis distribution. The only thing I've seen that high in the Linux world when you're not really running anything, the deepened desktop environment can spike the CPU uh, in a big way. But yeah, that's that's too much CPU for, for what we're doing here. Uh, memory, I gave this machine four gigs of memory. It's using a third of that, 32%. So it's using one third of the RAM I gave this machine of the four gigs. Uh, that's not good either because, again, we're not really doing anything uh, other than the system monitoring tool that I just opened to monitor the system. I've got nothing really running, nothing that I ran on my own anyway. I'm sure there's a lot of background services, you know, Microsoft mentions that it's constantly in contact with my machine. So, you know, some of the uh, spy spying on me and stuff, I'm sure is, you know, taking up some of the system resources. Let's see what kind of customization I can do here. I'm gonna right click on the desktop. I'm gonna choose personalize. Let's see if I can actually like change the wallpaper and stuff all right choose your background so uh why is it not letting me click on any of this background so all of this stuff is like grayed out for some reason it is it locked in some way you need to activate windows before you can personalize your pc okay so i need to pay that 200 dollar uh, license to activate windows before i can change the wallpaper so, it's understandable. So, what do I think of Windows 10? Again, I, I never used Windows Vista 7, 8, 10. Uh, I haven't lived in a machine that ran Windows in many, many years. So, this was very much a first impression install and review. So, how do I grade Windows 10? The install process. The install process was not bad. It was a little bit longer than most Linux installs. It was about twice as long. Uh, but that wasn't horrible. It wasn't a bad install. 
I give the install process, I give it a B. I think that's a fair, fair grade for a Windows install. Uh, what do I think about the Windows 10 desktop? Okay, let's start with what you see immediately. Um, it's a beautiful desktop, right? And I'm not much of a tweaker, so I would probably be fine with the default settings. But apparently they're not going to let you change wallpapers, themes, icons. At least not in this preview version that I reviewed today. I can understand that. I mean, you really need to pay $200 to be able to change a, a, a wallpaper on your operating system. Uh, you, you, you need to pay for support and, and all that. I can understand that decision. They don't want just anybody out there just putting any wallpapers, you know, on their product. Um, the menu system, those weird web tile thingies that are animated and spinning and flipping around and, and doing weird things. And they're not categorized in any uh, normal way, at least not that I'm used to, you know, coming from Linux. Uh, I could probably get used to that. It, it wasn't the worst thing in the world. Um, you know, I prefer just a standard drop menu with some text, you know, uh, maybe just just give me the uh, program icons. But if you want to give me a lot of uh, spinning animations and stuff, uh, yeah, I can deal with that. I, I don't mind a little bling on my desktop every now and then. Uh, let's see. Let's talk about the, uh, the license. We basically gave Microsoft the right to uh, have any information they want about our person, about the software we're running, about the hardware we're running, about our location. Am I fine with that? No. Uh, I would never agree to a license like that in real life on my real machine. That is uh, just absolute an invasion of privacy, um, invasion of your security. Uh, free licenses like the GPL, the BSD license, the Apache license, the MIT license, all those free licenses. Uh, read some of those things and then go, go back and read the Microsoft end user license agreement. And it, it's scary. It is scary what you're agreeing to let Microsoft do to you by running their software. So the EULA, I give it a complete fail. The Windows 10 desktop, uh, it's hard to give it a passing grade either because even in this preview, yeah, I didn't pay $200 for a license, but I can't install the VirtualBox guest editions. Uh, okay, so you gave me a Windows preview but you won't let me actually install some of the software that I want to install to see if it works. You want me to pay for Windows before I install the software that I need to see if it works. That makes no sense. Uh, it, it makes no sense for you to have these uh, features locked down in your preview. If you're gonna let people take a look at Windows 10 and you want them to actually use Windows 10, they need to see if the programs they want actually function in Windows 10 before they buy Windows 10. Makes sense to me, but anyway, today, of course, Sunday, April 1st, Easter Sunday. Again, happy Easter, guys. Peace.